In a little village in North Wales, a long, long time ago, there lived a prince named Llewellyn and his infant son. The mother had died in childbirth, and so the prince lavished all his love and care on his only child. Prince Llewellyn also had a hound named Gellert, who could sense the prince's devotion to the child, and so was a protective, protective to, of him. And his master, mas, master was, or even more so. One morning, as the child was sleeping in its cradle, Prince Llewellyn heard a sound of hunting, of a hunting call. <laughs> and the breaking of hunt of dogs nearby. <coughs> so calling Gellert and pointing to the cradle, he simply said, look after my son while I am away, and left the dog, obediently laying down next to the sleeping child. Before very long, the hound's fine nostrils quivered. He could scent an enemy, and indeed there was a wolf nosing in the doorway. Gellert, quick as lightning, leapt at the beast, and the next moment the two were locked in a life and death struggle. The baby went on sleeping, unaware of any danger, but the two creatures fought to protect the infant and the wolf to devour it for it was hungry. After days of filtering roaming in the hills and forests. As blood splattered all over the walls and the f- and floor and the wolf getting nearer the sea scent of its intended prey pushed the brave dog closer to the cradle panting the wolf thrust Gellert right at its base and overturned its bespiring and covered with blood the baby continued to sleep ignoring all the danger it was in undisputed by the Growling and snarling of the two combats, combats by, but Gellert now sensing the danger to its ward. Fought back, drove his to the drove his opponent to the opposite corner and sank his teeth into the wolf. Into the wolf, with a last dying snarl, the wolf t- fell back and drew its last breath. The faithful Gellert lay down triumphant, triumph, but exhausted, next to the sleeping child now, covered by blood-stained blankets and coverlets. Later, Prince Llewellyn returned from his hunt and Gellert dragged himself to the feet and went to meet him. The prince was horrified at the sign that met his eyes. But most of all by the blood on Gellert's mouth and feet. He did not see the wolf's, wolf's body in the far corner and he could only think that Gellert had killed the child. And he drew his sword and in a movement of blind fury he plunged it into the heart of his faithful hound dog hound the dog gave a picturesque and puzzled look up at his beloved master and sank back dead with a final wailing breath and then the prince heard a lusty cry from the direction of the cradle he picked up the child and found it safe and sound and, it, and the, his eye fell on the torn and bloody carcass of the wolf in the corner. In a flash, everything became clear. The prince's grief was beyond control and 
for, for more many years he could not erase the memory of that awful day from his guilty mind. But if you are on visit to the Conroy Bay in North Wales, you can visit the village of Bedgellet and see the Prince the Wellen is supposed to have buried his companion there in a, to, is a tombstone where <coughs> there which tells the dark tells the, the whole story and his head in to the memory of my brave dog.